Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can be seated here for a minute. I got, I got a lot of stuff to share. I'm not going to get it all in today. I share a lot of this on Wednesday nights. God's been speaking to me. Uh, this, um, it's been speaking to me a lot. Uh, so we, we are declaring, we are praying. Pastor Tammy and I are on a phone call every morning for at least two hours from 7 to 9 every morning. Uh, and we are declaring and we are praying for, because how many know we're in a battle in this nation? And it's not a battle of Republican, Democrat. It is a battle of light and darkness. It is a battle for evil and good. Okay, and so we got to see that. We got to recognize that. And so I went to bed um, Wednesday night and woke up. I woke up Thursday morning. Before I even got out of bed, I heard this word reverberate in my spirit. One word, and it was the word deceit. Deceit. And so I just got up. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what God was seek, saying. And I thought maybe it was a scripture, but, and I, and, but God didn't give me a scripture. And I looked up the definition. Now, I did, now watch this. I did not know, I hadn't looked at the news, I did not know that uh, Congress had certified somebody to be the president over the electoral vote. I did not know that that took place at 2 in the morning. I didn't realize that. I didn't know that. I just woke up and heard the word deceit, looked up the definition, and here's what it said. It said, the act of causing someone to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. You understand what God's saying here? The act of causing someone to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. As I was praying that day, Thursday, and, and one of the things that I've been saying all along, in my mind, in my opinion, I said that this, the manifestation of God was not going to we were not going to see it until man has exhausted all his efforts. Now, I said that word. We would see the manifestation of God only after man has exhausted all his efforts. That night in a speech, President Trump said, we've exhausted all our efforts. He said those exact words, which was really interesting. I said, okay, so praise God, we're about to, I said, where are we then? Where are we in the, in the time frame? Where are we? And I heard, you know, many people that have stood loyal, many people that are good people, uh, they, they stood loyal with Lazarus. Martha and Mary were good people. They, were, they, they loved Lazarus. That was her brother. They stood with them, but there came a time when they're like, you know what? Jesus didn't show up. We got to put him in the tomb now because it's over. Heard one of the senators cry. It's over. It's over. Got to put him in the tomb because it's over. What we were waiting for didn't happen. Wasn't expected that way. It's all over. Good people said that. They're not traitors. See, don't be quick to judge these people and say that they're traitors. They're just like, you know, Martha and Mary, they put them in the tomb. Uh, and then Jesus showed up. It was really interesting whenever he said, you know, hey, by the way, he tells his disciples, this is what Jesus said. He said, we're going to go to Lazarus. And here's what he said. He said, Lazarus is dead. You remember this? Remember this? Okay. Lazarus is dead, and, God's, and Jesus said, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad. He said, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad. Now, it went on, he went on to say, I'm glad I wasn't there. That's what he said. He said, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad that I wasn't there. Now, I'll catch what I'm saying in the spirit and what's going on. Okay, a lot of people are saying it's over. That, that, that whole thing has, is dead. Put it away. Give up on it. Just concede. It's all over. And Jesus is saying, everybody's saying it's over, and I, I'm, I wasn't there, and I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't move that way. I'm glad I didn't do what everybody was expecting because God says, I don't do it that way. It's not, my, it's not my way to go move the way you think it's going to be. God says, now I'm going to move in a way you never expected. Okay? That's what God said. Now, here, he made an interesting statement. He made an interesting statement in John chapter number 11. And here's what he said. How many, how many, heard, how many believe that, that God was speaking through this whole thing? How many know that God has said some things before about what was going on in this nation uh, to his prophets? And Jesus said this in verse 40, John 11:40. 40. Well, first he said, take away the stone, for 39. And they said, but Lord, there's a stench. How many, you know, in the spirit realm, I can smell a stench right now. I've been smelling a stench all week. Something... Something's rotten in Denmark, you know what I mean? Something don't smell right. Something don't, something's not, there's an odor that I don't, that I don't really care for. There's an odor that I'm just, you know, just can't, can't handle that smell any longer. And it's just not, it's not been, it's not been a, a pleasant, you know, odor. And it just stinks. But in spite of that, Jesus said, take the stone away. 
take the stone away. And then he said this, did I not say to you, if you would believe, you see the glory of God. If you would believe, you'd see the glory of God. So take away the stone. I, um, I got so many stuff that, you know, different words. That I, I, I should write these. I should write the dates down. Uh, but it was this week. Um, the Lord spoke to me that it was the dawning of a new day. The dawning of a new day. And which is the beginning of the first appearance of something, something that's about to come into existence. I want to know, where are we today? And the Lord, at the beginning of January, the first week, the Lord really kept impressing upon me the 10th of the month, which is today. And that something, that something was going to uh, take place today. Something, something, it was at least going to be the beginning of something. Not, and if you were here to hear my message Wednesday night, uh, it's, where, it's where I think we're going to, the drops of blood, we're going to see the drops of blood. Okay, there's going to be some drops of blood that's going to, that we're going to see. That's prophetic. Um, and it's, there's an illustration. Let me just say it real quick. Uh, what I shared and what the Lord showed me is our, the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the saints have delivered the kill shot. And what the Lord had given me years ago, and I'll do this really quick, but years ago when I was hunting, I, I, a deer came out. I shot a deer, uh, and, and it just turned and bolted like it was never even hit. And there was snow on the ground. It was the first thing in the morning. And I stood there. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. There's no way. And I kept, I kept, you know, going over and looking at it and talking to myself. You know, like, there's, I, there's no way I missed that day. I kept saying that. There's, I couldn't have missed them. I couldn't have missed them. And there's things, you know, I, I look at what's happening in, in, in our nation now. And I'm like, did we miss it? No, we couldn't have. God, that can't be. That cannot be your will. That you, you, you cannot allow that to happen. There's, there's a remnant people that have been believing and praying and declaring. Prophets have been shown these things. Look, that, that, no way, no way. I, I look at the agenda. I look at it. No, no, you cannot bless corruption. You can't do it. And so then I, and so I kept looking. I said, there's no way. I, I, I couldn't have missed that thing. So I, I finally I walked down there. It's in the snow. I look at the tracks where the deer was. Nothing's there. There's no blood. There's no evidence. No blood, no hair, nothing. And I'm like, I can't believe it. I still, no matter looking at what I saw in my mind, I could not come into agreement that I missed that thing. Like, no way. So finally I said, well, it ran that way, and I started following the tracks. And I followed these tracks for about 50 yards, and all of a sudden I saw a drop of blood. I saw a drop. One drop. I said, okay. I did hit that thing. I knew I couldn't have missed that thing, but one drop of blood doesn't mean you hit it good, you know what I mean? So I fall and I see another drop, another drop, another drop, all of a sudden I see a puddle. And I said, ah, I hit this thing pretty good, I think, because now puddles of blood are showing up. And pretty soon I seen the dead body. And you know what I realized afterwards? I shot that deer right through the heart. When I, when I delivered that blow, when I pulled that trigger, that bullet went right through the heart of the deer, and yet that deer turned and ran 100 yards like it wasn't even hit, and, and almost convinced me that I missed it. Almost had me convinced. Even when I went down, I'm like, there's no, blood. There's not, there's no evidence that, that what I did and what I spoke and what I said and how I prepared that, for that day. I had my gun sighted in. I had good ammo. I, was, you know, I, 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 I had a good squeeze on the trigger. Everything, I did everything right. And yet, the evidence was trying to convince me that I was wrong and that I missed it. But I wouldn't give up. I said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to say I missed that thing. There's no way. And see, and that's where a lot of people are today. They're abandoning shit. Well, we missed it. Well, it didn't work out the way we thought. Well, it didn't, you know, we, we prayed our prayers and the prayers didn't work. You must read it. You must serve a different God than I do. Okay. I read about it. Prayers work. We just sang a song. God's working. Even when we don't see it, he's still working. Amen? And so where are we today? What's going to happen today? And here's what I heard in the spirit. What's going to happen today is, is it's, all, it's about stones. David has gathered his stones. Okay? Jesus has rolled the stone. The stone is being rolled away. The stone's being rolled away. Now, there's still a little time, see, there's still a little, I'm not sure spiritually how much time, but the stone's being rolled away. Now, once that stone was rolled away, guess what it did? It exposed some stench, too. 
Okay, and there was still some expectation, and things didn't happen immediately because there was still there was still some things. There was still he was going to have to call Lazarus out. He was still going to have to be called out. Okay, then even when he come out, there was still some things that had to be done. There were some grave clothes that had to be taken off. Okay, there were some things that had to happen. But today, the tenth of January, today's the day that the stones are being rolled away. Today's the day that there's a crack. Today's the day that there's an earthquake. That's what I sense. Okay. Today is an earthquake that is a rumbling, a splitting of the stones, okay? And what, here's, what, here's what happened, okay? You ready? Where is it? It's in Mark chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 28. And behold, verse 2, there was a great earthquake. I believe that great earthquake is happening today. In the spirit realm, okay, don't look for it in the natural. But in the spirit realm, a great earthquake is happening today. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door, sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, his clothing is white. So there was a great earthquake. The stone has been rolled away. And we're, gonna, we're, we're seeing, and I'm sensing the cracking, the cracking. Holly was sharing with me a little bit about the, the uprising from, from the earth, from an earthquake. It's really, when an earthquake happens and there's a splitting and there's an opening, there's stuff comes out. Okay? Stuff comes out, spews out, starts coming forth. And this came to me Friday morning. Friday morning, the Lord spoke. Now I've got to figure out where this is. Oh, there it is. I didn't even know. See, the Lord will speak words to me. I don't even know what they are sometimes. The Lord spoke to me Friday, and uh, he gave me the word warmong, warmonger. Warmonger. I wasn't even sure exactly what that is, okay? I just heard that. And I prayed about it, and here's what the Lord told me. It's a spirit. Okay, you know, the, the spirits have names. Remember the spirit that came forward, Jesus, and he said, my name's Legion. Okay, there's a spirit. This was the spirit of warmonger that has been released on the earth. Warmonger. And here's what it says. A warmonger is one who encourages or advocates aggression towards a particular group. That spirit has been released by the enemy into the earth, especially this nation, and comes specifically against the president and those who support him. That you can see it happen. Such aggression, such defiance, such hatred, you know, that is coming. It just, just, it's, it's demonic is what it is. It has to be resisted in the spirit realm. You cannot defeat this thing in the flesh, okay? And so we continue. And as we have from the very beginning, uh, how long ago was it that, we, that we've been declaring and releasing? I still got it in front of my, right in my yard, flying an appeal to heaven flag. Because that's where it is. That's where we are. We, we, we cannot appeal. See, we thought all we had to do was appeal to the logic of our government. And if they just saw the evidence, if they just, they, they would rule on behalf uh, of the truth. They didn't. The evidence was there, but they didn't rule on behalf of the truth. Because that's not where the battle is going to be won. It's not going to be won by the heart of man. It's not going to be won by the logic of human intelligence. It's not going to be done won because the lawyers were really good and they presented a great case. That's not where it's going to happen. We cannot make our appeal that way. George Washington issued that flag in the Revolutionary War because he, he recognized that our army cannot go up against Great Britain. There's no way. In the natural, it cannot be done. We read about it all through Scripture with Gideon and and David and anybody else, we read about this. It, it doesn't matter what the odds are. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. It doesn't matter whether you're a majority or not. That's irrelevant. Okay? That's absolutely irrelevant. We may, that's when we look and say, okay, we're not going to fight this battle in the flesh. We're not going to fight it with our own intellect and, and, and intelligence. What we're going to do is we're going to appeal. You say, well, you can only appeal to the Supreme Court. Yeah, that's true, but you don't know what the Supreme Court is. You think the Supreme Court's in Washington, D.C. I'm, I'm appealing to the Supreme Court that's in heaven with God as judge. Okay, that's the true su supreme. That is the supreme of supremes, okay? That's the true supreme of court. That's the judge of judges right there. That's where our appeal is going. We can take our appeal all the way to, all the, way to the Supreme Court in heaven. That's the true supreme court, okay? That's where our appeal goes. And we have to look and say, God, look what's happening Okay, we can't do anything about it, but you can. And so we continue to do that. And I hear in the spirit this morning as I was worshiping, I hear Moses looking at the people and saying, who's with me? And guess what? 
you know, they were all frolicking around. They were unassured. They were, they were wallowing in sin. They were doing all kinds of stuff. And Moses says, do I got anybody on my side? And the Levites come and they stood at attention and said, we're with you. And Moses says, watch this. This is the word of the Lord to you today. Moses says, strap your swords on. That's what he told the Levites. They came and said, who's on my side? The Levites came and said, we're with you. We're with you. And Moses says, strap your swords on your side. And I want you to go and start slaying. Now watch. In the spirit realm, you start slaying that which is sinful. Start recognizing what sin is and start using the word of God against it. Not against people. Against sin. And not be afraid to call sin, sin. Not be afraid and say, hey, that's not right. That's dark. That's ungodly. That's wrong. Don't be afraid to say that. See, well, it might offend people. I, I get, yeah, it, but no, it won't. Might offend. It will. The word of God will offend. Don't don't say to say, well, I wonder if it's going to. I'm afraid it might offend. Don't walk in fear. Okay. Yeah, it will. The word of God is going to. So don't make uh, don't make any mistake thinking that whether or not you're going to offend somebody by speaking the word of God. You're going to offend somebody by speaking the word of God. Does that mean you don't speak the Word of God? Absolutely not. You speak the Word of God. Okay, it will, it, it's offensive. The Word of God is offensive. Okay, and so don't be afraid to speak it. Don't be afraid to take your sword. Don't be afraid to sling that sword and pierce that. Uh, that, that when you see the enemy, when you see what sin is, pierce the sin, not the person. I always pray for the person. Okay, but slay the sin. Don't be afraid to slay sin. There's too much things that's going on right now. The church is confused that they're, that, that the church Calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. They don't, they're confused. They don't, they don't even know what's right or wrong anymore in the church. They're so influenced by the culture, which is the exact opposite of what God called. God called the church to be the rulers here, not, and, and the church is to be the influencers, and the church is to have the voice. Because we have the truth. The Word of God is greater than our Constitution. And I'm not against our Constitution, but, but but listen, we make our appeal to the Word of God. We follow the Word of God above even the government. You understand that? The Word of God is supreme. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to stand on the Lord's side and use your sword. The weapon, the sword is the Word of God. Don't be afraid to speak it. Don't be afraid to come into agreement with it. Don't be afraid to be on God's side. Because we're at a point now where you can no longer can be on the fence. You see, for a long time, the church just stayed on the fence. Well, we'll just kind of appease the both sides, both, you know, well, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to do, you know, we'll just kind of, kind of ride it out in the middle there and just not, not say certain things because might, somebody might not like it and somebody might get offended. And I'm like, wow, maybe somebody should have told Jesus that. <laughs> he didn't have a problem going around, going around and say, you hypocrites, you brood of vipers. You whitewashed tombs. You know, call, he, he called it what it was. How many know he looked at those Pharisees and loved them? But boy, the things they did made him mad sometimes. I get mad when I look at the church sometimes. I get angry. I love the church. God loves the church. Okay, he, he, he died for the church. It's his body. But there's things that go on in church that anger God. You know what I mean? There's, things in, there's probably things we do that anger him sometimes. And we want to be, you know, sensitive to that and say, God, is there something that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing or something that we're saying that we shouldn't be saying? And so we want to be humble that way. But listen, don't be afraid to speak the word of God and make that your supreme plea. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let's, how, anybody encouraged today? You got something, Dave? A coin. Hmm. So, so let's pray. We take authority over that spirit of betrayal.
We take authority over that spirit right now that would try to betray the things of God in this nation. And Lord, we thank you for godly men, righteousness rising up, women. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your people rising up in this nation, people that have a voice, people that have your voice and your will and your declaration right now in Jesus' name. We declare it. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you that you're exposing things. We thank you, Lord, for the spiritual earthquake that's hitting today, that's beginning things. We thank you that the stones are being rolled away. We thank you, Lord God, that that which has been buried and, and Lord, things that, that you love that are, were buried, things that you, is your will that were buried, Lord, are coming out of the tomb because today, Lord, is the beginning of resurrection day and we give you praise for that in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet and begin to praise because there's a, there's a progression when, 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 when Je Jehoshaphat recognized that there was something coming against him that he could not, he had to make his appeal to heaven, if you remember this, I'll, I'll say it real short, but there came an urgency, and then there came a fasting and a prayer, and a declaration, and then there came a praise. And the praise happened before the battle, you understand that? The praise didn't happen after the battle, it wasn't like after, oh, well, after it was all said and done, then we just praised God. No, it happened beforehand. Jehoshaphat sent, Jehoshaphat sent his praisers out beforehand. See, we should be praising now. Don't wait till, the, don't wait till you find the dead body, okay, in, in illustration of the deer. Don't wait till the evidence is there. Start praising them now knowing that you're going to find the dead body, knowing that you're going to find the evidence. Start praising now knowing that it's coming, knowing that God's fighting for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Words out right now in the name of Jesus, and we execute.